today's project diary I'm going to teach you how to grow a beautifully delicate blue star flower called borage from seed. Hi guys welcome to project diaries. Today's video I want to talk to you about a beautiful little flower called borage. Now this is an amazing companion plant and it's also edible. Now if you're familiar with my channel you may have seen this video where I list off five of my favourite edible flowers and borage was definitely one of them. It's a tiny little blue flower, it's amazing for doing cake decorations and when you eat it it's got this tiny cucumbery, really uh, fresh flavour. So it's an amazing uh, flower to grow. So today's video I want to grow borage from seed and here's how to do it. So if you've been following this channel since the beginning, you'll recognize this trusty chocolate eclair box. These work fabulous as propagators, but you can use anything at this point. It really doesn't matter. So just to give you a close up of the seeds, they've got this lovely texture and this bulbous end, so they're quite distinct. Also, if you want to learn how to make this really easy and simple seed trail, the link is on the screen now. So I'm using multi-purpose compost. I'm not using any homemade compost at this point because obviously there's going to be seeds from food waste in that. So I'm just using multi-purpose compost for the seedlings. You want to bury the seeds around three times their depth. So I've just used my fingertip to poke in a hole in the center of each pod and then I'm dropping a seed in each one. Now I usually have a really high germination rate so I'm only planting as many as I need but if you want to take the gamble you can put two in one pod as well. You might end up with more plants than you need but you never know. Some of them may not germinate. Once you put a seed in each pod, you then just backfill gently. Now you want to get rid of any air pockets, but you don't want to pack the soil down too tightly because these little seedlings will want to push through. They don't mind having a bit of resistance, but if you pack it too tight, they won't be able to push through the soil. Now I've said borage are really good companion plants because these grow really well with squash, strawberries, tomatoes and cabbage. Now as I suggested earlier, they do attract certain pests, but they also repel tomato hornworm and cabbage worms. They're also amazing at attracting pollinators and top predators such as ladybirds, hoverflies, bees and beneficial wasps. So after you've backfilled them all you want to water them gently. Now hopefully your propagator's got some really good drainage holes so you won't overwater these. And don't forget to label them up. Again, this was on that video link that I said earlier so you can make your own little plant labels. Don't buy them, they're so easy to make. And once they're done you want to leave them in a warm well sunlit place for about a week or two. Now spring came really early this year so I planted these in February and here they are just six days later. Now you see the seedlings are tipping over to one side. This is a clear sign that they're not getting enough sunlight. I'm just experimenting growing these early but they should be growing straight up. If they continue to get low light they will become extremely leggy and over time the seedlings will become weaker and weaker and sometimes prone to disease so you really want to give them the best start. But I've come up with a solution with this so here's a link on the screen if yours do the same. They're really easy, simple and free to make. So here's the progress after 10 to 14 days. Now you'll see that some are growing slower than others, but just be patient, they should push through and everything will be fine. And here's the progress at the three week mark. Now you'll notice there are two missing here. That isn't because they didn't germinate, it's because I've taken them out and I've repotted two more seeds where the larger seedlings were. Now I've shown you how to repot from this point on 100 times in other videos, so I won't do that in this one. But I will show you what happens when you put one of these plants in an infected area. So once they get to around this size, you want to plant them on. Uh, so you can put these straight into your garden or into pots. Uh, they are perennial, so they will come back every year. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you a close up on these uh, to show you what's going on. So I've taken these two out because I'm allowing these to get attacked by various different things so I can show you what aphid attacks and spider mite attacks look like. Just so you know what to look for and how to treat it. So if I give you a close up, you can see the aphids are attacking this one. You can physically see them all over the plant, but what happens is that they basically suck the life out of the leaf, which is why it's curling over. It's also had something attacking the base, so this could have been a snail or earwigs or something like that. And there's also some spider mite. I'm trying a different experiment on this one, but if I could just try and turn it around, I'll show you what a spider mite attack looks like. Now if the camera would just focus for me, yep. Now I've seen a lot of people post this in the Facebook gardening group. Now if you can see these white little dots all over the leaves, this is a spider mite attack. Now if you haven't seen these, here's a close up. They're just tiny little red spiders that suck the life out of your plant. If left untreated, this will damage or kill your plant. But thankfully there's an easy way to solve all these attacks, so check out this link to find out how. 
So after around three weeks, some of the seedlings are big enough to plant outside. Now you might need to harden these off. I've done another video here if you want to check out what that is. And if you look at the other plant, it's slightly yellowing. That's because of improper watering and I'm doing another video on that soon. Now you just want to dig a hole roughly the same size as the pot you've got the seedling in. Now I'm always reusing these yogurt pots because they're so simple to use. So all you need to do is just put the plant between two fingers, squeeze the pot, give it a tap and it should just pop out easy. Just keep giving the base a little squeeze and you should allow gravity to just let it slip out nicely. Never pull on the seedling just in case you damage it, but what you want to do is you also want to prise out some of these root systems. This is going to allow it to then grow into the new soil. Just a little squeeze here, try not to damage those either. Then with one quick rotation of the wrist, place it in the hole gently and just press it down slightly. Again, you don't want to push it down too hard, but you do want to make sure that it's sturdy and all the air pockets are out. Then just backfill with any leftover soil, just make sure that the seedling is standing up by itself. And that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to place two more other seedlings in this container. I'm going to keep four in a square foot. So once these mature, it should make out pretty good spacing so they don't fight for nutrients, sunlight and water. And you'll also see another plant in there that's also borage, but that was my planting from last year. But I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute. So once you've placed all of your seedlings in the container, you want to give them a really good watering. Don't just lightly sprinkle the water over the top. Allow the root system to really get soaked and in some really good drainage here. That's then going to allow the new root system to branch out into that new soil and establish really well. Now once these mature, the leaves are really good for a mulch. And as I said, they're really good to grow with strawberries because not only do they improve the soil context, they also improve the flavour of the fruit. Now you don't want to eat the damaged or yellowing leaves, but you can use these exactly like spinach and you can also eat the flowers. Orange is also used as a supplement and as an oil, mostly from its seeds because of its high GLA content. It's rich in omega-6 fatty acids and great for inflammation, acne, cardiovascular disease, menopause and eczema. Some studies also say that borage oil is much better than fish oil when it comes to anti-inflammatories and relieving pain from rheumatoid arthritis. It's also been said to help with fatigue, diabetes and epilepsy, along with many other illnesses and ailments. There's also conflicting information on the internet saying that it helps with the production of breast milk, but borage contains something called pyrrolizidine alkaloids and shouldn't be consumed whilst pregnant or breastfeeding. Large consumptions can also make liver disease symptoms worse, so if you have a baby or liver problems, please don't consume these. Also, some people have been known to have allergies towards edible flowers, so please don't gorge these if you're eating them for the first time. Despite all little nasties trying to eat all of these leaves, you can see they're just attracting all of the nasty pests in one place and pulling away from all of your vegetables. So while these little nasties are chomping on the greens, you can still have a lovely, refreshing, slightly cucumbery aftertaste on the flowers. Now you don't want to eat the yellow ones, but the green leaves are packed full of nutrients and you can use them exactly like spinach. You can eat them raw, put them in salads, anything you want. But I've been doing an experiment on this plant, so it looks a little bit worse for wear. Now I'm just going to snip off these yellowy base ones, you really don't need these, but if you have the more mature leaves later on, you can make those into a tea for a fertilizer. Now I've shown you how to do this in the stinging nettle tea video, it's exactly the same process, just use these leaves instead. Because borage leaves contain potassium, calcium and vitamin C, all really good nutrients for other plants. They do like sunlight but they can grow in partial shade and they will produce flowers all season long. Now these don't look like they're diseased so I am going to put them in my compost but I will just take off the rest of these yellowing leaves. But the other thing you want to know about borage is they will self seed. That's why I'm growing these in containers today. If you put these in your beds they will self seed and multiply really really quickly. They're going to be a bit like getting gremlins wet but they are really easy to weed out and they don't grow too big a root. So here's what they look like when they've been planted in the garden and they've been left to their own devices. As you can see they're really well established and they're producing loads and loads and loads of flowers. If you just look closely you can see these little spiky bits here. Now these aren't stingers but they can get stuck in your skin but they're nothing to be worried about. But like I say the other container is just for my experiments at the moment but I'll show you how they grow in a minute. But I just want to show you the glory of borage. As you can see pollinators absolutely love these and it's been said that borage helps bees with their honey production so that's fantastic. It has turned a little bit cold today so there's not as many pollinators as there usually is but this entire plant is usually swamped with pollinators and it's an amazing view. And you can see these little delicate flowers. It's really easy for the pollinators to get in there and get all the pollen. 
Now, as I said, borage is really easy to grow. These ones have pretty much been forgotten about, barely been watered, they're quite drought resistant and they don't mind really poor soil. And while borage do love sunshine and you will get the best results if these are in full sun, they also don't mind being grown in partial shade. And if you are growing them in containers and the early stages of growing borage, you do want to water them well and regularly, but once they're established and mature like this, you can start watering less frequently. Now borage is a really hardy plant, it doesn't mind colder weather and it withstands high humidities really well, it just doesn't like frosts. If you do have really bad soil it's a good idea to feed these once a week with a high phosphorus plant feed. This will ensure your plant constantly produces lots and lots of flowers like this. Now you don't need to deadhead them but hopefully you are eating them in their prime but if you deadhead them it will help produce even more flowers. Also, if you prune them around midsummer, it will promote newer leaves coming through if you want to eat those as well. So these are around the eight week mark and just before they hit full maturity. And as you can see, they're maturing really well. They're producing these flower buds and it won't be long before they start producing flowers. And here's the one from last year, a little bit more established and they're growing the flowers already. They're absolutely beautiful little blue stars. And like I say, you can add these to your cool glass of lemonade in the summer. You can add them to cakes, eat them in salads, anything you want. They're just a beautiful, delicate little flower that I absolutely love. So give them a try. And there you have it. That's how you grow borage. I thought I'd include it in today's video because they're really under, underused and underutilized little flower. And they're fantastic. I, I think they're beautiful. And as you can see, they, they, do, uh, they do attract quite a lot of pests. So they, it's actually managed to keep them away from all of my tomatoes and my cucumbers and all of my veg patch. So it's fantastic. <laughs> so if you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Next, uh, the next video I'm gonna do is hopefully comfrey. So uh, that's a little exclusive for you. But Anyway, take care of yourself and I'll see you again next time. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.